has urged legislators and policymakers to abandon gendered language, including no man's land. Um, <laughs> you can't say that. You see, I suppose I just speak as a man, and when James T. Kirk says, and to go where no man has gone before, I see that as meaning mankind. Yeah. I, I don't see that as men only and not not women and whatever. So uh, am I wrong with that, Nikki? <laughs> well, the feminist argument is there are so many examples of the word man being used yes, first yes. that we end up with this kind of thought that men are dominant. And, you know, feminists yeah. think that anyway about all aspects of life. And I have some sympathy with that. I am yeah. a feminist and I do kind of get on board with that. But the one thing I will say is this won't work because actually every time you try to legislate for language, everybody goes, Ugh, no, I'm protesting. I'm not going to be forced to say that. And we've got loads of examples of that in history. I mean, in the eight 18th century Britain, um, Jonathan Swift, very famous writer, he tried to do the same and sort of like iron out problems in the English language. He, he called them inkhorn terms, these like words that he tried to use. Um, he, he was in favour of kind of cleaning it up because it was, uh, you know, a mongrel language. But he completely failed. He's like a writer that we remember for his works, but not for his protesting about language. Um, and, it, you know, the French themselves, they have the Académie Française, don't they, where they try and preserve yeah. the, the French that they want us to use, not, not things like le chewing gum or whatever that le people shopping. use. <laughs> yeah, all that. Le Walkman, I remember at school. So, so, you know what, what you I can find, try, but you won't succeed, is what I'm saying. What, what's hilarious about this is that, you know, the, the, at least the Mediterranean European languages all have masculine and feminine words. That's true. So what are you saying? You're going to completely uproot their entire language and so start true. again? That's true. But that's so, interesting in, so in and of itself, because the words that are feminine or masculine also again colour people's views on what maybe a masculine profession is or a masculine object versus a feminine one. So, so what you're silly. saying is it's even worse in France <laughs> if you are a feminist. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay. We're lucky that we don't have, uh, yeah, gendered nouns. Yeah, I, I agree with that. <laughs> so, I mean, no man's land is, a, is an interesting phrase. They would replace that with unclaimed territory, oh. which is very sterile, isn't it? Very sterile. Um, I don't see the problem in preserving historical terms. Well, you can't say dual public. That no. should be that should become average citizen. <laughs> I mean, it's They've got to get a bit more creative. Speak, isn't it? It's just like HR's taken over. It's but like an HR is, workplace taken over the country. If you're going to come up with an alternative, make it creative, make yeah. it interesting, so people want to say it, not this hor agree. horrible, bland language. There's yeah. another one of those, like, master of ceremonies has become host. I mean, how yeah. boring yeah. is that? It's I very mean, boring. Sake, I don't yeah. mind being called a master as a woman. I don't mind. <laughs> you know, we so. encourage it, in fact. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yes, but, and also, I, you know, as a man, I wouldn't object to you yeah. being called Absolutely. a master. Uh, how would you feel about being mistress of ceremonies, though, Eamon? No, I don't think... I don't, 